Another day, another person trying to gaslight you into thinking that you don't actually know what you're talking about. The funny part about this is, is every time their argument falls apart, guys like this have to come out and they have to educate you, right? That's the whole, well, one of the whole problems here on what Sweet Baby Inc. is actually doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into from Willie Video Game Hot Takes and at 8-Bit Closed Fist on Twix. One of the coldest takes I've ever heard, especially around this Sweet Baby Inc. situation. So if you guys like what I have to talk about here, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, like the video, do all of those things, okay? I said it in a wrong order. You got 10 seconds. All right, I can't wait that long. I got to talk about this. That was like five seconds. If you guys didn't subscribe to the channel already, that's your fault, not mine. So... This guy decided to say on TikTok that he has tried to avoid the conversation around Sweet Baby Inc. for as long as possible, but it's just getting ridiculous. So, in his words, here's what he had to say. Wokeness is killing gaming. Here we go. I have avoided the conversation around Sweet Baby Inc. for so long, but now it's getting out of hand. Basically, when a game is being made, some people will hire them to help them out with writing a dialogue or character design of certain types of characters. Spoiler. Now, what's so funny about this <clears throat> is he completely tries to take this idea that we know to be true and gaslight us and say that it's something else. So you mean the idea around companies that are trying to forcefully inject into various different medias, other different kinds of people because of some made up transgression that never happened to them ever. See, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. We're gonna talk about people making things up and then telling you that the thing that they made up, you did to them, right? Because that's the whole argument here. This is one of the things that goes back for a long time. He then goes on to say that uh, a lot of these characters uh, aren't the default. And, uh, and we all know what he means by that, right? Let's use a word they use. That's called coded language, okay? What he means by the default, he's talking about white straight men, right? However, historically, we know his argument falls flat on its face because he actually talked about Samus in his tweet. You know, saying that if Samus was a character made today, she would be called Force Diversity. No, because the intention behind Samus was not to push an agenda that is from a made-up transgression. So, he then goes on to say that, well, they don't complain about uh, games like Gears or like God of War, uh, Ragnarok, or games like Alan Wake 2. You mean the game where they took a traditionally white area of the world and injected people who weren't white into it because again of the made up transgressions that you never faced hmm he then goes on to say later on in his video here's what sweet baby inc does and i will let him explain let me break it down to you. Let's say I'm a young black gamer who lives in Los Angeles. So I start a service to say, yo, if you come up with a character or a story that involves a young black gamer who lives in Los Angeles, you should talk to me about it. Because I kind of know what that's like. So someone's creating a movie and they say, yo, we have this character who's a young black gamer who lives in Los Angeles. Would he wear something like this in the winter? I can then look at that character and say, mm, add a little bit more drip here, add some drip there. Even though it's winter, we don't need a puff jacket, we're chilling. So you see in his example, Example there, he's just a young black man who lives in LA. He's gonna start a company, right? A service. So that way, if people who wanna make video games or tell stories about a young black gamer living in LA, uh, they can call him and he can kind of give them the lowdown on it. And to be perfectly honest, if that's what was happening here, nobody would have a problem with it. I know a lot of people that write military fiction that call people who were active duty service members to see, hey, it, would this actually happen in this situation? And they do research for their writing. That wouldn't be a bad thing. Here's where your argument falls apart, okay? What if they replaced that black gamer living in LA, okay, for a white skateboarder living in the suburbs, okay? Because there's not enough representation of white skateboarders. But let's say that the original story had already had that black gamer living in LA. This would be massively, a massive disservice to the original story.
Now, why does this argument even exist in the first place? You see, most people don't seem to understand it actually goes back quite a long ways, right? And most people call it woke now, but it's actually called neo-Marxism. Basically, the idea is that society has transgressed upon you in a certain way, and because society has transgressed upon you in that certain way, now it owes you something. Most of the time, this argument, in fact, all of the time, this argument is made because of somebody's economic class. However, most people in America reject the idea like, dude, if you're broke, like sometimes the cards just get dealt that way. It sucks, but like bring yourself out of it. We know a lot of people who have pulled themselves out of it. So now instead of saying that society owes me because I'm poor and the rich made it that way, what they're saying is society owes me because I'm a certain color that they, and supposedly society had, had an issue with him being that, or because I like to sleep with a certain group of people because society totally cares about that, or when those things don't work, then they go even deeper and they try to make up something, right? They try to call themselves something. They try to say that they're, they're a Z or a Zer or a them or a they or whatever in a way to tug at the heartstrings of those who will listen to give them money and to prop them up in society. Because as many of the generations recently were told, everyone's special. No, actually everybody's not special. You see, the things that make you special are the things that you do in your community, with your family, with your friends. If you want to be special to society, do something great for society. And don't sit there and tell society that you're special because society didn't like you. Because you know what the crap part is? Most of the people who are making these woke changes in companies have been called special and then provided privileges for skills they never even had. So, if you are just a black gamer living in LA and you wanna give people that information because you lived that, go for it, all right? What you don't do is you don't come out and say, hey, you know that white skateboarder in the suburbs? Well, no, he, we, we need to talk more about me because society didn't like me, which is bullshit because you're obviously on TikTok with a fairly decent setup with a, like a green screen behind you and all that. So obviously society hasn't hated you enough to cast you out. And I would argue they should never do that. What we don't want is for people to make up transgressions that don't exist and then tell society that we have to pay for it. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.